stunts. They're super cool, aren't they? But they're more than just eye candy. They're a powerful storytelling device. A well-executed stunt can convey a character's bravery, desperation, or skill in a way that dialogue alone never could. And they can be achieved even on a modest budget. I'm Angelica. I'm a creative at Artlist.io. Stay tuned as we'll take you through the world of stunts in filmmaking and also show you how you, yes you, can achieve stunts in your videos. A stunt in filmmaking is any physical action that carries a degree of risk or requires special skill to perform safely. It's important to note that stunts aren't just about danger. They're about creating a believable, visually compelling action that serves the story. Sometimes what looks dangerous on screen is actually quite safe when properly executed by trained professionals. Here at Artlist, we got our feet wet with different kinds of stunts a few times. For a 100K fund commercial, we made an actress fly in the air and above a bus, or the equal ground production. Massive fight scene, five versus five in a dark garage, really hard to coordinate. But let's talk to director Brad Day about it. In terms of who we wanted to use, it's an actor we've worked with before who's like a certified stunt coordinator. So we got him on and he's actually the lead actor in the, in the footage itself. And then he brought on a safety coordinator to look after what we're doing, making sure all the, the hits look legit, especially like the face hits. We really needed to think about how the camera was going to move in terms of like maybe a whip into it or just a little bit of movement so your eyes weren't on the fact that we're not actually making contact with the face. Chris, the stunt coordinator, what we did was pick a scene, would film a wide and just make sure it worked in the wide. Mm -hmm. And he, he would essentially put it together. But it was all about just nailing that initial wide shot and then would come in and just kind of go crazy. Remember, stunt design and rehearsals take time, a lot of time. So make sure that you factor it in accordingly in your schedule. Rehearsal was, was huge for this. We actually did it the day of and we shot the night of. I'd say it was a seven hour rehearsal followed by a, a 12 hour shoot. So for us, it was, a, it was a massive day. Now, let me tell you about one of our recent projects that really turned up the heat, Fire Skate. We had professional skateboarders ride through the night with fire shooting out of the backs of their skateboards. We wanted to show how you can elevate a stunt by adding an extra layer of spectacle, in this case, fire. It's a perfect example of how you can take a familiar action and transform it into something truly unique. You know, it's funny. Sometimes we find ourselves needing stunt crew in the most unexpected places. Take our Underwater Love production, for example. We had two professional performers dance underwater. At first glance, you might think, oh, that's just going to be a dreamy, artistic shoot. But diving into the world of underwater stunts was honestly a completely different challenge. It just goes to show that stunts aren't always about high-speed chases or explosive action. Sometimes they're about creating beauty in challenging environments. Here's director Spencer Frost sharing more about that day. Basically, we had to find a swimming pool that was deep enough to do all these crazy actions that we kind of pre-planned. So two divers meeting underwater, dancing, fighting. We wanted the depth. We wanted it to feel expansive and kind of like infinite. So the pool's super deep. I think it was six, maybe eight meters deep. Our two talent who were both professional trained free divers, so they can hold their breath for four minutes plus. Yeah, we probably got them to do like 80, 80 individual dives through the day. Effective communication with your stunt coordinator will make your production successful and safe. My advice is to include them in the pre-production process as early as possible to make sure that they can really help you spot all of your blind spots. We had this awesome thing where we had an underwater feed going to our underwater camera so the whole crew could watch what was being filmed on the surface. We could talk to people in the water, they could talk to people above water, tell them where to be, what to do. Especially if you're a cinematographer, DOP, director, you're kind of focusing on the people, the production, the shots. You might not be focusing on all the other external elements that might not be safe. It's always good having someone else oversee those elements and then you can focus on shooting, directing, anything else. For those considering professional stunt work, firstly, understand the hierarchy of a stunt team. Typically, you'll have a stunt coordinator overseeing the entire operation, stunt performers executing the actions, and potentially a stunt rigger for complex technical setups. 
One of our most thrilling projects was actually women bikers that we shot recently in Seoul, Korea. This includes professional bikers doing motorcycle stunts. I think the director Lafique will explain better about it. Every time when we're using stunts, we have so many good cool references, cool images, like cool thoughts if you imagine in your head, but it's always hard to um, make the environment forced to uh, capture that. For me, the first thing was equipment and environments. Let's say there's a biker who can ride really fast, but the problem is how are you going to capture the image that's moving so fast? So the technical standard for cost for any stunt should be about $1,000 for a day rate for a stunt person. Someone who's a stunt coordinator, a little bit higher, it's a little bit, I want to say 1200 to 15. That's where I would negotiate. But I think one of the most important things that we can do for uh, when you practice stunts is rehearsals. You need as many rehearsal days as you can. Rehearsals are one of the most important things I can stress that if you're going to do stunts, practice, practice, practice before the big day. Remember though, a well-executed simple stunt is far more impressive than a poorly done complicated one. Yeah, I would say just to pick the location first, make sure it's safe and then build a stunt on top of that location. We did a river crossing jump for a, for a Hot Wheels commercial a few years ago, and that was a very narrow landing. And it, yeah, it just took a lot of preparation to, to make sure everyone was in line. Yeah, first take, it just was perfect. And it's kind of like a whole heap of build up for that, and it's, and it's done. Typically, it's done a, a really good idea is to keep the takes as minimal as possible because it keeps the risk as low as possible. Put GoPros in crazy places and put your cheaper cameras in vulnerable spots and the, the shots will look better and better the closer to danger they are. So. Making stunts look impressive on camera doesn't always require a big budget. First, focus on your camera work. Fast whip pans to simulate hits in fight scenes. Use clever angles for fall stunts to make small jumps look bigger. Editing is crucial too. Quick cuts can increase the perceived speed and intensity of the action, while strategic use of slow motion can emphasize the difficulty of the stunts. Implying danger through showing reaction shots or the aftermath of a stunt can be just as effective as showing the entire action on screen. And please, never underestimate the power of sound design. The right sound effects can really sell the impact of your stunt. I hope that after watching this video, you're feeling more confident about using stunts in your productions. Remember, none of this effort is worth it if the stunts are not pushing a story forward, idea before execution. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more behind the scenes tips and tricks.